Can you hear me? Okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, happy to be here with all of you today. My name is Bruno Mussard. I work at ST Microelectronics, just like my colleague who introduced you many things about uh, artificial intelligence. Topic here is around security at some point. We speak about something really big coming to the IoT ecosystem, which is Matter. I will speak a bit about Matter because that's pretty new. Nobody knows much about this. Uh, I will explain the rationale. And specifically for this new IoT connectivity standard, let's say, we'll speak about how we can provision certificate. Certificate is something basic in security. That's the way to prove that something is authentic. That's quite basic. For people doing security, it's commonplace. But that's a way to have a sort of paper which is signed, and the device can prove that it's a genuine device, and it can be securely and trusted on the home network. Here is, we speak about smart home, um, because today the scope of matter is to have connectivity of all the devices inside the home. That's the first objective. Later on, the consortium in, char in charge of this standard will extend it to uh, industrial application, to uh, smart building, this sort of thing. But today, the topic is around the smart home. Everyone speaks about smart home with connectivity and so on, but here we have a chance to have a sort of worldwide standard to connect all the devices from the various vendors. So first, I will do a quick introduction about Matter. It can be a sort of uh, uh, summary for, those, for those who already know the standard. Then I will speak about the concept of commissioning, the way we accept a device on the local network at home. Then I will go specifically to the service around uh, dev device provisioning. How do we program a device inside the chip? I will program a certificate, sorry, inside the chip. And then later on, I will speak about what ST can bring to a device maker in terms of chips, in terms of service, to have some matter-ready uh, object. So what is matter? Matter, in fact, is an initiative coming from a group named uh, CSA. This, this stands for the Connectivity Standards uh, Alliance. Uh, there are many CSAs today, too many at some point. Here, this is a CSA that is now in charge of Zigbee and Matter uh, Connectivity Standards. So the objective is to have a unified standard for all objects at the smart home. That is something really important. Today, what we see at home is fragmentation. Fragmentation in the radio standard, fragmentation in uh, device makers. You, have can have, you can have device from Google Nest, device from Amazon, device from, uh, addition from Tuya, and so on. So how do we have something well, we are, everything works together. So today is not the case, and that's a problem that matter is bound to fix, in fact. So what we want to get here <coughs> sorry, is interoperability between the device. How can the device can speak to each other? So here, we can speak about various classes of device. The most famous one is a smart lock. Then we have smart plugs, light bulbs, white goods, bright goods. Uh, smart speaker, HVAC, and so on. So various classes of devices, and how can we get control over all these devices at the smart home? So the idea was to add an additional layer of communication, which is IP. Uh, it is IPv6 that comes on top of the classic connectivity stack, just like OpenFred, Wi-Fi, Ethernet, and so on. I will go more into the detail later on. The, the point is to have a sort of convergence for all the connective devices. So today, what we have in terms of standards, regarding radio, we have Bluetooth devices, Zigbee devices, Z-Waves. All of them are based on different standards, different stack, different implementation. So we want them to communicate to be inside the same ecosystem at home. So what we can do with Matter is to integrate to, to integrate what we call bridges, meaning that the objective is not to upgrade these devices. We keep them as they are today, but thanks to a specific component that is between the Matter network and the Zigbee or OpenFred or whatever, you have a bridge that 
gives the possibility to connect the legacy devices to the matter ecosystem. So that's something really important. So that's the first step. What we do we do with existing devices? Do we want to try them, replace them by our new ones, or integrate them in this new ecosystem and in these new standards? Beyond this, the objective of Matter is to integrate an over range, an over range of standards. Here we speak about OpenFred. That's something equivalent to Zigbee in the ATO2.15.4 group of protocols. We can have a mesh network thanks to OpenFred, but we can integrate as well Wi-Fi devices and Ethernet devices. So the, the, the point is to have a sort of grouping of all the devices that we can find at the smart home. So this slide is quite technical, but that's basically the concept of matter. We have a start network topology, which is quite classi classic regarding Ethernet standard. On the top, uh, in, the, in the red box, you have the hub. The hub network can be a fiber uh, connectivity device uh, with a couple of stations connecting wirelessly or uh, wire, uh, unwirelessly to BR, which are border routers or bridges. So you have different possibilities to connect the, the, the top network to some sub network. Here, uh, we, we, have, we have integrated two thread networks, meaning that all the device can connect it to, the, to, the, to the route thanks to some border routers which are placed in the middle. So we have two dimensions. First is about having bridges for existing devices, just like Zigbee and uh, Z-Wave. And for thread devices, we have some border routers who give the possibility to directly integrate the thread devices to the matter network. So that is something really important. So we have the central hub, we have the border, border routers, and then we have a full set of peripherals that in the matter ecosystem we call endpoints. So this, this can be a light bulb, it can be a smart speaker, any kind of devices can be connected to the matter ecosystem. In terms of software stack, we have a layered approach. So on top, we have the application that gives the possibility to interact with the object to have its operation uh, on a daily basis. We have here a connectivity layer based on IPv6, UDP, TCP, which is commonplace in Ethernet devices. And at the lower level, it can be Ethernet, Wi-Fi, FRED, and so on. So there's a possibility to reuse all these existing protocol and have, uh, the, uh, the in the end, the capacity to, to see them speak to each other and all integrated in the same network. On top of this, having device in the network is fine as long as they have been properly uh, enrolled and configured. So there's some security out there because what we need to do is is something really important is that we need to trust the device. Where the device comes from, does it feature a risk for the existing network, for the existing fleet of uh, home devices? So we need to put some security somewhere in the device. It will be done with the provisioning. And once the device has been provisioned by the manufacturer, we need to do what we call commissioning. Commissioning is having a sort of digital equipment. It can be a smartphone, it can be a tablet. We are going to enroll the device at the home network thanks to what we call attestation, meaning that the device is detected and it has to prove that it's a genuine device and that can be trusted and integrated easily in the network. So that what, that where comes device management. That once the device has been integrated, we have the possibility to uh, integrate it, to uh, decommission the device. For instance, imagine that you, you, you move from one place to the other, you want to decommission the device, recommission in another matter network. So there are, there are sort of management around uh, the device. There's, there's many management features around the lifetime, around the life, during the life cycle of the device. So what is device commissioning? So I, I will go to provisioning later on. Now I'm going to speak about commissioning. This, these figures come from the matter specification. Here, imagine that we want to integrate a light bulb inside the home network. That's something quite simple. First, we plug the device. 
we enter what we call a discovery phase. So the, declare, the, the device just declares, hey, I'm here. Please integrate me in the network. We have some security stuff here with crypto and so on. And at some point, we reach on the left box, on the right box, sorry, what we call device attestation. That at this stage, that the device can be integrated in the network and it has to prove its identity. That's something really critical. How do you prove that it's a real device, that it's a genuine device, that it's a device that can be certified thanks to the Matter certification program? Then there's additional certificates uh, for the functionality of the device. Here we spy, speak, to, speak about uh, node operation credential, but I will skip this stage. And once the device has passed all these stages, it's fully operational on the local network. So that's why complexity comes. I would say that uh, that's the case today for smartphones. We have a chain of security. Security, you know, is a chain by default. And just like when you connect to the internet, when you have some security certificate hosted on the, on the laptop, for instance, you discuss with a certificate authority, which is at the top of the security chain. Um, here we can speak about DigiCert, VeriSign, this kind of stuff. So we have a set of security authorities that goes from the top to the device. First, here at the top, we have the certificate authority. I mentioned DigiCert, this kind of company, or Kudelski even, that is connected uh, to a trusted server and that has the capacity to issue certificate and cite the certificate. In fact, the authority has the responsibility to deliver genuine certificate. The thing with Matter is that we have different layers of, sec of um, security in this chain. We have an intermediate stage, and we have a final stage with the, the proper Matter device. Just to explain that in the standard, they have integrated an additional stage. In the case, one vendor want to have different set of products with different uh, configuration, different features, and so on. That's why, in fact, you have three stages. At the top, you have the certificate authority. They deliver what we call a PAI, an intermediate certificate. That is signed by the top authority. And at the bottom, in the device, you have a name certificate that is signed by the intermediate certificate authority. So all of this to have a secure and comprehensive security chain. So how do we provision these, these certificates? That means that when the device is connected to the network, he, has, he must feature this certificate. We need to store it somewhere. And these two certificates has to be signed by the PAI and by the top authority. So how can we do this? First, we here we have a chip. Uh, this is an STM32WB. This is a Bluetooth low energy device uh, that you can see on the booth with a Matter demo. Uh, typically, this device aims at a Matter endpoint. It can be light bulbs, it can be a smart speaker, this sort of class of device, uh, this class of device. So we have a blank device that comes directly from the silicon foundry. What's happening is that during manufacturing, at the final test stage, ST will provision an identity, which is some sort of serial number. It's quite basic. And then we have to make it a sort of matter device. So what's happening here is that the device comes to another programming stage. Uh, here we speak about a programming station that has connectivity to a remote server. The remote server, in fact, is a public key infrastructure. It's nothing more than that. Just like for crypto with RSA, elliptic curve. So we need to provision some certificate. And the certificate is delivered by, by a, a PKA infrastructure, which is called the remote provisioning server. So what we do at this stage, we program a piece of software inside the device. This software when activated, issue a request. So, hey, I want to be a matter device. Please drop me a certificate. So there's a security protocol around this. The device talks to the programming station, which is local. It can be done by a contract manufacturer or 
by your own uh, programming uh, infrastructure. It depends on the, secu on the security or manufacturing model. Once the programming station is informed by the request, it places the final request to the remote provisioning server, who delivers the DAC and PAI, which are further on programmed on the, on the STM32WB device. Then comes the final stage, when the device is programmed with the final uh, firmware, which is the application in itself. And at that time, we have a device which is matter ready, meaning that it contains the two certificates. We speak about the DAC, which is the, the device attestation certificate, and the PEI. In fact, we need two security certificates to turn a chip into a future matter device. So, once then, so we have the two certificates which are programmed, and then the, the application in itself. And at this stage, the device is matter ready. That's the conclusion. So, what is ST positioning with this new standard, with this new service? Because what is different here is that up to now, companies like XT were delivering chips, embedded software, programming tools. I would say that everything was centered around the silicon device. Now, what we bring on top of this is service. Because in matter, it's mandatory to have the device provisioned with these two certificates. So what ST want to do is to offer an additional service to ease the life of the OEM maker thanks to this uh, security service. So what we have today, we have different products with development keys, development boards. Here we speak about STM32WB uh, that can be found on two different kits. One is the simplest one, is a Nucleo, which is uh, developed for quite a long time for STM32 product. Then we have development kits with more features. ST is an active promoter of CSA Matter, so we work on the standard itself, the functional aspect, and the security aspect. Security is about the provisioning service, but also the certification part. I will speak about this tomorrow. There's another presentation around security tomorrow, same location, same time. And we speak about the radio equipment directive and the coming regulation. But th that's another topic. So AST is an active promoter of CSA Matter. The company is a leader in radio silicon platform with BLE, OpenFred, next to SubGigahertz as well with LP1. So we have this sort of silicon with uh, embedded software, with a stack, with a secure boot, secure firmware update. We pass some security certification as well. So beyond this, going to Matter is not straightforward. Matter stack is complex. There are many features. The way to integrate is not straightforward. That's why now we have it in what we, co in, in what we call Xcube Matter, which is an expansion uh, component for the STM32 cube ecosystem that applies to any STM32 device we have on the market, whether with radio or without radio. So it's part of the STM32 ecosystem. So now you can find the Xcube Matter package for STM32WB. So it's ready. You can directly download it from our, the ST, ST website. And on top of this, we deliver the provisioning service. That's an, that's an easy way to have a Matter device uh, with little effort, I would say. So regarding provisioning service, it is supported by ST and a partner, which is Comscope. Comscope is a large company that has a PKI established for more than 30 years, as far as I know. Uh, they deliver certificates for a wide range of IoT devices. So we deliver the silicon platform, the API, the security services, the XQ Matter uh, package with the Matter Core inside, and Comscope delivers the PKI infrastructure and the way to source the PEA and DAC certificates. So something quite peculiar to understand, but uh, just to explain that there are different uh, business models around the provisioning of matter certificates. At the top, you have the PEA, which is a certificate authority. It can be your PAA, depending on the security model, it can be ST. This part is, is quite open. 
There's the possibility to have various intermediate certificate authority. So it can be, they can be one PAI per vendor, they can be multiple PAI per vendor. This part is quite technical, but depending on the class of products, depending on the product portfolio, one OEM may decide to have different intermediate uh, certificate authority. So, but it's, uh, it's quite complex, but that, that's not the purpose. But there's some flexibility in the way to integrate PAI, DAC certificate inside the product. So Comscope is, act, is acting as a, the root certificate authority. Uh, PAI can be controlled by, by the device maker, but it can be outsourced to Comscope as well. So there's the possibility to support multiple vendors, multiple PAA, and so on. So th the, um, the model, in fact, is quite open. One thing which is of importance and was introduced by Matter is that the certificate authority is connected to a distributed ledger. So that's something quite commonplace regarding smart system today with uh, the blockchain. It's based on the blockchain, meaning that every device that is connected to the matter is registered to the DCL, which is a distributed ledger, in fact. So we have the proof that each device is updated, is recorded, and uh, its life cycle is recorded a long time. So th that's an aspect that is really important and that was brought by, by Matter as well. So on the top of this, you have a security chain uh, that gives the possibility to prove that each device is genuine, is updated, and so on. So I will not go on the details about this. But here what I want to stress is the possibility to have every bricks for Matter integration from ST Microelectronics. So that's where uh, I reached to my conclusion. So regarding resource and support, uh, what we have today, we have STM32WE55, which is a BAD product with two cores, one for radio, one for the application, many application nodes, uh, demos around the endpoint, demo around the border routers, demo around the bridge. Bridge can be based on uh, STM32MCU, MPU, and so on. You can get resources with, with uh, webinars, videos, and so on. Regarding development and, and integration, our partner can deliver some security services, some trainings, and so on. And for pre-production, there's a possibility to have some test certificates uh, just to prove that the connectivity is made between the OEM and the service to have proper matter integration. So thank you for attending this presentation. It is quite technical, but that's something that uh, it is at the root of matter uh, functionality and security. So secu certificate provisioning is at the core of matter security. So if you want to know more about this, this aspect and matter in general, you can come at ST booth. We are just next at all foray. And uh, if you have any question around uh, provisioning and security in general, um, just let me know. Any question? No? Well, one thing which is of importance uh, is that regarding security, the CSA, the CSA consortium uh, had an initiative around uh, security certification. Here I speak about Matter, which is a radio standard at some point for connectivity of a wide range of devices. It can be Wi-Fi as well, meaning non-wireless. Non but in parallel to that, they have developed their own security certification program in order to lift the weight of fragmentation today. Because what we have today is a strong fragmentation between various countries. Each country has its own uh, IoT security certification program. So what's important at CSA, you have the functional aspect, but the security aspect is covered as well. So that's something that is taken into account, meaning that it's not enough to have a functional product. This device, the product has to be secure as well. So there's a will to have some convergence on security. And uh, now it is aligned with the US cyber trust mark, with the coming European regulation. There's a will to have alignment as well, in order to with the life of OEM makers that want to sell the product in Europe, in the US, and all around the world.
So like I understood you, you're using certificates, but also a blockchain. So I asked, I asked myself, why not using directly decentralized identity instead of certificates to, because it's way more easier to use them. I, w I would say that it's, um, yeah, for sure that it can be confusing to have two different security solutions. I would say the blockchain is just for registration. And um, it's not under the control of the device maker, PA, PEI, and uh, OEM, in fact, you see? So on top of this, there's an additional service that gives the possibility to interact. You have diff direct paths between the PA and the blockchain. For, I would say that for the OEM maker, there's no direct communication with this type of solution. So there, there was a will to segregate and isolate the security blocks, I would say. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. So thank you.